you said something about um, bipartisan and I'm quoting you here, see, but I'll have to read it. Um, bipartisan and non-denominational values are only guiding principles we can all agree on. Not only they are guiding principles we can all agree on, they are the fundamental ethics that bring people together. Now that's an optimistic statement and I see what you're driving at and I share your view as I look at my own country and as I look at America as a great admirer of America who thinks it's critically important for global order and freedom that America pulls together, do you, do you see America as irredeemably divided or can you pull it back? You're obviously striking a blow to try and pull it back. Yeah. Are you optimistic or pessimistic? Can I ask you optimistic. that way? Optimistic. I can't help it, sir. Can't help it. And <laughs> uh, I am optimistic. I. Look, America needs some, we all need to go through rehab, okay, over, over here. And not only over here, but we got to go through rehab. And here's what I mean. We're all, um, uh, we're drinking the Kool-Aid. And I think once we admit, it's, it's Kool-Aid, okay? American values are much more common and centrist than we're being told to believe they are. Who's got the microphone in America? Yep. Two of them, and they're turned up loud, and it's yep. the extreme right and the extreme left. Yeah. But I would argue that that's less than total in total less than twenty percent of the country. But they got yep. the mic. Yeah. Now where we agree in the middle, that's not as dramatic. Of it doesn't it's not it's not candy. Jeez, oh man, that's like a regular. I want my candy. Well, your candy's on the extreme extreme right and the extreme left, and they got the megaphone because it sells tickets. Yep. And tells yep. tickets means that's that. what the watch it and they're cashing in. So I think we have the the the, the shade pulled over our eyes. Where actually the centricity um, and where we have the com where we, Americans meet on the common denominator of values is the majority. It, it actually we we got the numbers, and we're just trying we're trying to get watch it watch them. We got the ship and the pirates on the extreme right extreme left are trying to board the ship and mutinize this damn thing. Now they're loud and they look mean and they got fangs, but hey, look around, man. We got them beat eight to one. Don't let them on the boat. Yep. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So I think I am I am optimistic. Now, look, how much is this extreme sort of behavior? And I think it's fair to say, when you use political terms far right and far left, when is it gonna come back to some common sense? When's it gonna find its waterline, so to speak? I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I think, you know, part of it will be, to use the term ROI again, are gonna see that, oh, that was, those were sort of vapid um, uh, things that we were going after. I think even this last year of like, uh, um, with COVID, people were in limbo. We were at uncertain futures. And so what do you do when you're uncertain? You want something solid to stand on, something to grab. So people ran to the extremes because they had like, there were others around. Oh, we're a tribe. Oh, good, I'm here. I think slowly people are starting to get a little buyer's remorse. I think they're starting to look around and go, I don't know. I don't really agree with these people. <laughs> Wait, that's going a little too far. I don't purchase that right there. I, mean, what is, I think we're going to start seeing some buyer's remorse for the people that ran to these extremes because they just don't think the payoff. I don't think the residuals there. I don't think the, 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 it's, it's actually there unless you just want to be a damn anarchist. And that leans into those tyrants. I'm like, no, you get out. Non-negotiable. Not if you're, you know, if you're, if you're really trying to seek being better and understand, we got to understand, talk about if you go through any kind of rehab, you got to understand the value of sacrifice. Boy, we don't like sacrifice. We are a result oriented. Give me my now people. Well, come on now. We try to teach our kids the value of delayed gratification, but boy, we don't do a damn good job of acting it out ourselves. And then you got the other side that both sides think they have a license on certain values. Like the, 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 the left thinks they have a license on intellectualism, right? And then the, the, the right thinks they got a license on work ethic. Well, they don't. Neither side has a license on this. The left does not have a license on rehabilitation. The right does not have a license on consequences. The left does not have a license on the value of science. And the right does not have a trademark on faith. Just as the left doesn't have trademark on progress, the right does not have a license on tradition. 
just as right now, you add all that up, and then you sit there and people think, think on the far right think that every every liberal is a socialist. Well, the people on the on the on the on the far left think that every conservative is a racist. Now, yeah, uh, you you've referred to the you've used the term agency, which is a really good term. It means respecting another person's personhood and uh, you know encouraging them to believe in their own citizenhood and and what have you. And one of the things that I note about the elites that I find is so offensive, and which I think people, that 70% in the middle, I think they imbibe, is this patronising attitude that these technocrats know what's good for you. They don't really believe, actually, in democracy, a lot of them. They don't believe in the mechanisms that our forefathers set up so carefully, slightly differently in your country to mine. Same basic principles, though, that are designed to ensure that everyone's voice is heard and respected. Uh, and that you do get a genuine sort of meeting of of values and perspectives and priorities. What you've got now is this sort of terribly patronising attitude that nah, you couldn't possibly know what's best for you. And one of the ways we see it playing out in this country, I don't know, and I think it's probably true in yours as well, is in the push to, uh, if you like, shape kids in schools and in the education system in a way that denies the values often of the parents of the children. I think um, there's a profound spirit of uh, anti-democratic sort of uh, sentiment floating around amongst a lot of those technocrats and it makes people in the middle feel very alienated. I think America could use a civics class. <laughs> right. I think we could use a class on the civics of civility. Yeah. which you brought up in many ways of just expect social expectations and why because Dan just be come on because it's decent that's why what do we what do we 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 uh, you know one of the other Kool-Aids that we drink retail therapy yeah retail therapy it's 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 Materialism. you know people were cure people were dumbfounded and uh, that that Donald Trump became president eight years ago. I was like, well, hang on a minute. At the very least, let's just look at what we prize, what we give blue ribbons and gold medals for in America. Money and fame, baby. Well, this guy's got both of those at just that level. I mean, that's what we say. Hey, attaboy, you've done it. You, you come to the front of the line, have the hit seat at the head of the table. Just on that alone, I was like, you can't be dumbfounded he got in just on that alone. Forget what his politics were or were not. I think our values are out of whack there because we still allow you to sit at the head of the table and get to the front of the line, no matter how you got that money and fame. No matter how many people you crossed, how many pick pockets you picked along the way or what you did to get it. If you got it, we're like, you did it. And every advertisement and everything, it's, it's telling us that's what you do to win. That's how you win. That's Kool-Aid. That's not that your teeth gonna rot. If that's the way forward, we're all all our teeth gonna rot. That's not. That's not the if the one. If we're be telling the world, and I get it, that the one with the most toys and money wins, then we're all in the end gonna lose. That just doesn't add up. That math's not gonna. Happen. It may win the day now. You may have the seat at the table now, but you're not gonna be coming to the table to eat that eat that long. That food's not good for you. It's not going to last. So I just think we have to lengthen our our view of when I say delayed gratification, which I'm a big fan of that word and what and unpacking what that means. And I best understand it and realize it when I look at ourselves existentially is that we're here for this little blip of time and there's been thousands of thousands of years behind us and there will be more after us. So you sit here and you go, oh, OK, we have a short sense of time. And we don't think about, well, if I sacrifice this today, I'll get a greater prize further down the road. If I sacrifice this today, I'll create more opportunity for my daughter and sons tomorrow. We don't we don't think about it. We intellectually talk about it. But boy, when it comes to we're in our own rooms, it's like, so which one you want to do? You want to pay the tithe of, of, of having good character? You want to you want to you want to, um, you know. You want to stick to the stick to the task that you know is the one that's going to pay you back later. Shoot, man, we get in the room, we we go for the short money. 
No, bullshit on that. I want, I want my candy now. I'll take it and go. That's what children do. It's what kids do. It's like, you know, it's, you don't, we have to make, we have to understand that we, we got to take greater investment in ourselves. Cause I do think it's personal. And I, and, and, but I think the more, the more we take a greater investment in ourselves, that actually that's going to be the, how we make a collective change. If every more people start looking in the mirror and going, I'm doing this for me, I'm going to try and be better, more true. That's how a collective change happens. I, I think it's just the new frontier of the mind and, and the heart. But right now, geez, we don't trust each other. And if you don't trust each other, how the hell do you start trusting yourself? And if you don't trust yourself, how do you trust others? You know, this, I heard this quote, 30% of Americans trust their neighbor. Yeah. Isn't that a the breakdown of curve? trust is a huge problem in our cultures. Huge. And this last year, it's just sparked the fire. It's not like new things happened this year. Things just got exposed because we were forced to go off and be so individualistic by sheer safety. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm an optimist and a fan that people can, 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 can change behavior and that it's not, again, I think the veil is thin. I think we think it's really hard to get to, but I think it's right in front of us. Thank you for watching this episode. We appreciate your support. If you value vital conversations like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel there and also click the notification bell to stay up to date with new releases.